I'm Teresa Jackson. Today I'm going to talk to you about Photoshop's Quick Mask Mode. Quick Mask Mode is my favorite and most often used tool for creating detailed selections quickly. To understand the Quick Mask Mode, you need to first understand the relationship between selections and channels. I've recorded a separate video on this topic. You may want to watch that video first the relationship between Photoshop selections, channels, and layer masks. Let's start with a quick review on this. I'm going to pull my channels panel out so that we can see what's going on. Go to the marquee selection because that's the simplest and most direct selection tool. And then go up to my menu, select, save selection, and say OK. As soon as I save that selection, it shows up in my channels panel as an extra alpha channel. I'm going to deselect with a command D. This alpha 1 channel is a saved state of the marquee selection. If I want to load it back into an active selection, I'll hold down my command key because I'm on a Mac. If you're on a PC, you would hold down your control key. That changes my cursor to a pointed finger with the marquee icon. And then I can just click on this alpha channel and the marquee is now back loaded as an active selection. The quick mask mode does all of those steps only much quicker. I'm going to throw away alpha 1 here to better demonstrate. I still have an active marquee selection. I'm going to enter the quick mask mode with a Q on my keyboard. I now have a temporary alpha channel. Let's open this up so that we can see. This temporary alpha channel is named quick mask. If I hit the Q again on my keyboard, I go right back to the active selection. This icon right below your foreground background color chips will also put you in the quick mask mode. But honestly, I've never used this. There's no reason to when it's so easy to get there with the Q key. So I prefer Q on, Q off. Marquee selections are boring. Let's take a look at a more reality-based workflow using the quick mask mode. I'm going to do a deselect with the command D to deselect my marquee selection. And I want to make a selection of the no parking sign in this photo. I'm going to use the quick select tool to try and select this sign. I'll paint over it. It does a fairly decent job, but it has a challenge selecting this because the colors are so similar. So I'm going to go all the way around and, and get the best that I can here. Then with my option key, I can uh, subtract the areas where the selection went too far and try and get this as close to the sign as possible. We'll subtract this corner down here. Now it jumped into the sign post, so I'll take my finger off the option key, paint this back in. And that's probably about as good as I'm going to get with the quick select tool. When I look at this selection, I can tell that it's not, it's not perfect. It's definitely not as good as I want it. Let's zoom in a little bit so that we can really see what's going on here. So we can see that it's a little bit ragged around the edges. But if I switch to the quick mask mode with the Q, I can see it in the overlay. And now I'm really starting to see how bad the selection is. I can go one step further and I can view the quick mask, the alpha channel, all by itself without the color um, of the image. And I get there with the tilde key. If I use the tilde key on my keyboard, it will hide the color channels. And now I see my selection in a black and white alpha channel. And it's very easy to see how rough and ragged this selection is. Hitting the tilde key again will return me to the overlay view. Essentially, the tilde key is just turning the visibility on and off of the RGB channels. So I can do the same by clicking the eyeball next to RGB, or I can get there with the tilde key. The quick mask is a pixel-based alpha channel, which makes it very easy to view and edit. I can now use other selection tools to clean up this selection. I want to straighten the edge along the sign here. So I'm going to use my polygonal lasso tool to do that. So let's zoom in. I can come along here, make a nice straight edge selection around my sign. Come all the way down to the edge here. Uh, zoom out a little bit. Zoom out, not zoom in. Come back in 
join this up. Now I've just made a quick selection with a nice sharp edge along the edge of the sign. I want to fill this selection with black because black hides white reveals. The quick mask channel here shows us what we're trying to create. This area I want to be black. So I'm going to switch my foreground color around so that black is my foreground color. I'm going to go option delete which fills with foreground color. Now I'm going to deselect and go to my um, view where with the tilde key where I see it in black and white and you can see I have a much cleaner edge along here. A quick mask can also be painted on. Let's switch to the brush. I know this area here should be white. My foreground color is white. I have my brush tool. I'm going to make the size bigger and I could just quickly paint that out. I can also use my brush tool to clean up these other ragged edges. I'm going to hit my tilde key again to go back to the overlay view and we'll zoom in on this area. Now I like to paint these uh, straight edges using the shift key mode. When, because I have a Wacom tablet, I need to make sure that my pressure sensitivity is turned off to make this work and it is. I'm going to get a brush just a little bit smaller. So let's zoom in. We'll start on this top edge here. I'll click and then shift click and it'll draw a straight line between those two points. So click, shift click. This is a very, very fast way to get straight edges. Click, shift click, shift click, shift click. And if I want to go around a corner, I don't use the shift key. If I went too far, I'll switch my colors from black to white with my X key. And I'll clean this up in here. And I can go all the way around my sign doing this. I want a straight edge here with white because I'm inside of the sign. So I'll click, I'll shift click, shift click, get all the way around this edge. And then I need to get on the outside with black, so I'm going to switch to black and I'll click, shift click, shift click, come down here, shift click. Need to get on the inside of the sign here, so I'm going to switch back to white with the X key. So now I'm painting in white, so I'll click, shift click, shift click. And let's quickly see how these edges look now that I've painted around them using the tilde key again we can see how much cleaner the edge of my my mask is or my selection is. And I missed a little section here so I'm gonna switch my color to black paint over this. This is still a little bit ragged here so I'll click shift click click shift click just kinda of paint around this edge to get it nice and clean and you'll see how ragged the selection was originally when I used the quick select tool but painting on this in the quick mask mode allows me to create a nice clean sharp edge that I couldn't get to with just the quick select tool. So I've got two really bad raggy edges left here. Let's let's finish this up. I need to see the edge of the sign so I'm going to go to the overlay mode with the tilde key and then I'll make sure I have a white brush. I'll click, shift click, get around the corner of this sign, switch to black because I kind of messed that up a little bit and then we'll get this last edge here. And I can go past this and then switch to white and come back here to get that edge. And then we'll get this edge with white all the way down to here. Zoom out so we can see this. Use the tilde key to switch back and got one little hair here that I need to get out, paint with black, get a nice big brush and paint this right out. So now I have a nice clean selection of the sign and by simply hitting the Q on my keyboard I'm back to an active selection. With the active selection I could add an adjustment layer to make a color correction to this no parking sign. Let's add a curves layer. I like to use this drop down here on the bottom, pick curves, um, give it a little bit of contrast. So I'll brighten it up on the highlight end and darken down the shadow end. So the adjustment is made just to the sign with the selection that I cleaned up using the quick mask mode. 
The other option is, is that I could take that selection and mask out the sign from the background if I want to use it in some type of a composite. If I hold my command key down, I can load this layer mask from the adjustment layer into an active selection. So now I'm back to the active selection of the sign. I'll select the background layer, click the layer mask icon at the bottom, and now my sign is masked from the background with a nice clean sharp edge mask that I created using the quick mask mode.